Time to start fiberglassing the battery enclosure. So I've put a layer of 450 weight fiberglass. So the plan is, I'm not going to fiberglass at all, because I'll probably have trouble getting it out as well. I'm going to fiberglass the bottom, and maybe just the first bit of the edges. It doesn't go all the way up anyway. So I'll leave a dry bit to join the next bit up there. I won't fiberglass all the way up the top, I'll fiberglass, I don't know, up a bit and so I can get it out. I've just got to relieve those corners and yeah, away we go. The first process of the battery box is done. That bottom bit is all wetted out. Wait for it to dry, then pull it out, put it back in and do the rest. Set pretty much, so time to release it. This didn't release as easy as I anticipated. Almost like I made a bed liner. Good way to make a ute bed liner or something. The fiberglass resin had obviously reacted with the Land Rover's infrared absorption type paint. Well, after a bit of releasing, weirdly, it's reacted with... Um, it must have been resprayed in the back here at some stage. Like over the, um, the bed rails here, because the original paint hasn't reacted to the fiberglass resin, but the new paint has <laughs> different paint, obviously. The bottom bit of the battery box. Uh, so it's a start, so it's good getting that done, so I can put that back in and do more fiberglassing, but I won't have trouble releasing it now. On to step two, three, four, five and six. I assembled it back into the Land Rover together with the battery so that I could use the actual battery as the mould now. I used some foam as a spacer, then folded up the fiberglass matting uh, before wetting it out and using the rear door to create the mould or the sandwich for the fiberglass. Then I just had to wait for it to harden. Okay, let's peel it open. Slowly. No worries. has to be. Just peeling a little bit of paint off the thing, that's alright. We painted the other day. So that's the um, bit that I was main clearance bit, but that's fine. It's good. Next step was to assemble all the major penthouse components so I could take some measurements uh, in order to manufacture the front part of the battery box enclosure. Then after removing the battery, uh, I made up um, a quick mould for the front of the battery case. After moulding the front of the battery case, I cut a section out for the charge port wiring which would be uh, located in the back left of the car. The main purpose of the enclosure here is uh, to protect the battery from water ingress mainly. I do do a lot of river crossings in the Land Rover and if you get stuck, the last thing you want is uh, the battery to get wet. Then it was back to penthouse component modification and placement. This is the fast charging DC connector. Tesla uses predominantly aluminium cable for all their high voltage high current components. The main reason for this is, well, it's cheaper, uh, it's lighter, um, and the disadvantage is it doesn't conduct as well as copper, but you just oversize it to compensate for that. I've got a whole lot of fairly good quality copper cable, so that's what I ended up using. So I've got the charge port wires sorted. And I put a bit more heat shrink around the ends 
Our bolts are lock tighted through. High voltage interlock, H fuel. And some conduit to extra protection. And I'll put some coloured heat shrink to indicate positive and negative. Right, so I've got this. Uh, I think it's a choke. It's a big inductor with a ferrite core for the heater. It's either for the heater or the air conditioning. I'm assuming it's for the PTC heater. Anyway, I've got to mount this. This is the original mounting plate. Cut it all down, obviously, and drilled through all the way through with M5, 5 millimeter, and it's a mount here. Just going to put a five M5 screws through, and I'll put some nylon nuts on the other side. So the high voltage output for the air conditioner compressor and the PTC heater comes out of here. So this is going to mount down here and come through the bottom of the battery box um, and then this needs to be mounted well ideally near it so it's going to mount here I've got some M6 threaded stuff in here so this will mount in here and mount just there there we go, solid as, totally over engineered but that's alright just need to rewire this goes under here and that's under there the ground for the I'm going to assume it's the air conditioner goes on that side the main high voltage ground goes up to the negative and this ground for the PTC heater goes to this side so it goes through the inductor. Uh, so I just need to extend, actually I don't need to extend that, I'll probably just take that off, connect that there, make a uh, ground extension through to there, and then these two uh, positive high voltage things need to go up to the uh, fuse holder. So that's sort of the next step. Got all the high voltage components placed and wired up, and I'm just doing the low voltage control wiring, pyrofuse squib, the current shunt. Good opportunity to look at the the high voltage interlock system. You can sort of see here, it's just a loop. And so the wires just go to each one of these plugs, and when these are plugged in, basically that. On the other end it just joins them together. If any of these are unplugged or if the plug itself is unplugged it will disconnect the link through and uh, this will know that there's a high voltage component that's unplugged and it won't allow you to switch it on. I need to, ex these are the only things in the in this all these wires that I need to extend because the remote output plug is there and the PTC and air conditioning plug is over here so they won't quite reach so and one of these is for the front motor which I no longer have it's easy to fix I'll just literally bypass it and connect the wire straight through This is the 12 volt outlet from the PCS. And it was time to fiberglass up a top for the battery. Okay, time to mix up some more fiberglass. So I turn the scales on with this on so it zeroes it. Polyester resin. So it's not too cold, so I'm going to put 2% of catalyst in. So it's 1693, 2% is 1727. So I'll just fill it until it gets to 
27. And then mix it up. Mixing, mixing, mixing. This is a uh, tongue depressor. Probably won't use it as a tongue depressor after this. Okay, try, I'm just gonna pour and go. Well, that's sort of more rigid when it's dry, but when you get it wet, it becomes a lot more um, flexible and yields are in the corners a lot easier. Yeah, we go. Really happy with that. I mean, it looks very lumpy, <laughs> and it is. I'm going to say that I did that on purpose because curves give strength. Uh, the important bits are that it around the edge. There's going to be a seal. This is a tricky one. This is the 12 volt output, so it's going to seal around there, around this corner, and then up around there and high voltage controller actually bolts through and is semi attached onto the well it is attached onto the lid and the plug for the control for the battery and there's two screws that one is important because that needs to be earthed otherwise no high voltage components will come on which is a good feature it basically means that you know you have to undo that screw to take the top off but as soon as you undo that screw I'll have an earth cable to it to the body somewhere um, it means that the high voltage controller can never be powered up which means the high no high voltage contactors can close so it's just a safety feature I mean it's a bit wrinkly and stuff but that's fine it's not really a showpiece so there's the top. Alright, so I've decided I'm going to give it, give it a little, little bit of paint. There we go, pretty much done. Trimmed around the 12 volt outlet, so it'll seal around there and down there. And the high voltage controller has got the holes to mount it. Well, it's there, and there's a seal that goes around there. Now I have to make sure these ones have little O-rings seals on them. These ones don't weirdly, so I'll do something there. Uh, I'll just use some tech screws to tack it in. Um, yeah, pretty much good to go.